Hi. I am back with Alice. Hello. We Hello know again. we know each other uh, through Penguin. We're both ex Penguin, and we've done a video about gothic fiction because that's kind of your expertise. Very much so. Um, yeah. She's saying she has a whole shelf of it at home. A whole book. <laughs> A whole bookcase. A whole bookcase. <laughs> so if you want to check out that video, it will be in the description. But today I thought it'd be fun. This was a video I was going to do by myself. And then I checked with you and I was like, did you study English Lit? And I did. And you did. Where did you study? Bristol UE. Basically, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some books we discovered as part of our required reading at uni that we actually really, really liked. Yeah. So I read a lot of stuff that I did not like. And then I read some books and I was like, this is amazing. Like I never and really I discovered this. Thing. I yeah. think actually like my, my reading lists at uni completely informed the stuff that I like now today. And I went really? to uni like 10 years ago. Yeah. <gasps> oh Still very much. Like again, I had a gothic module. Yeah, and yeah. That, that just did has, it. Yeah, exactly. I did a dystopian fiction one. and. I had already read, I think maybe more like YA dystopian at that point, yeah. but I was like, ooh, there's, yeah, I got really into the, like there. the classic stuff. I think also, just to say very quickly that a lot of these books I read because they were on my reading list, but I didn't read them at the time. I would have to write essays on them. I might have read maybe the first chapter, written my essay on it, and then come back to it like over the summer holidays. If you've been following my channel for a while, you might have seen this before, but I have gone on a bit of an adventure and I went through all my, what's, what are they called, Sy syllabi? I looked it up because it's still all online for my uni. So this is this is all the required reading. Blimey. And then this is for my masters. I really recently went through. Um, and the gosh. stuff for my masters is definitely the stuff that I'd be interested in reading now. Like yeah. some of the stuff I hadn't read before. Some of the early stuff for my degree, I'm like, mm, I'm just going to skip this. Yeah, the fairy queen. I'm like, yeah. no thank you. Yeah, I remember having to do that. <laughs> I really wanted to have this because one of my projects is that I want to read some books that I didn't read during my degree. Ones that I actually think I, I will enjoy. Yeah. So This is actually a nice little list to keep referencing back it's to. It's nice, right? So my degree was English language and culture because I was studying it as a foreign language. So I don't know, did you do all literature courses basically? Yes. So yeah. I would have one to two modules every semester that were literature and, and the rest was like philology, linguistics, okay, language, yeah, all the stuff, which is where my first one comes in. Wait for this. Wild card. <laughs> <laughs> the Riverside Chaucer and Canterbury Tales. <laughs> this guy and I go, go I back. Mean... Um, so this must have been second year or first year, I can't remember, but this was for philology. So we did Middle English, we did Old English. How do I introduce the Canterbury Tales? I mean, firstly, can you just appreciate the size of that? Look at that! If you haven't studied English, which I think a lot of people that watch maybe aren't familiar with this, it's a collection of stories mm -hmm. about a group of pilgrims that are going to Canterbury and they each take turns telling a story and they kind of, in the stories, like poke fun at the other people. So there's like a priest and a rich wife and there's like all these different kinds of people from society yeah and it's commentary on that but they're also just really Funny. fun stories yeah there's a lot of like dirty humor and, and stuff like that so i spent a lot of hours sitting at my desk trying to like keep this open <laughs> with my elbow while right because we had to do the translations and they were like oh Whoa. try and do some translations of this i won't be able to pronounce it properly but to me it sounds like a Dutch person with a really thick accent trying to like <laughs> pronounce English in the worst way they can and I feel sometimes it might be easier for like Dutch and German people to read this than it would be really? for English. I don't even want to try and pronounce this no, but no. sorry if there's any philology teachers I apologize it's been nine years. Want dat april wit is schore sote the Drochte of March had Perse to the Rote. Anyways, in Treasury Tales. If you do read it though, it's kind of spelt like phonetically. Yes. So yeah, 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 yeah. It makes sense when you're reading through it. If you like The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling, it could be in there pretty much. It must have been inspired yeah. by the Canterbury Tales. There are modern translations. If you just want to read the stories, there's modern translations of it. I wouldn't recommend picking up this, probably. Okay, so actually a lot of the books that I've chosen are ones that are written um, by some of the really famous authors, but they're lesser known tales. So a lot of people know Graham Greene because of Brighton Rock, but this is one of my favourites. It's called The Ministry of Fear and it's slightly hilarious slightly it's very funny basically a young man goes along to a to a village fate you know, he does all like you know like coconut shies and like uh just general village fate type games and one of them is to guess the weight of a large cake 
and the way that he guesses ends up being the code word for um, like a, a spy essentially. So these people then think that he's a spy and he gets sent on this mission. He's getting he's getting um, all these weird people trying to track him down and kill him. Where is it set? 1940s? Oh, oh during, okay. During the Blitz. Actually a lot of the books I wanted to pick but I couldn't find them are ones that I just would cackle. I remember, this is weird, but I used to call my mum up and read out sections of the book <laughs> to be like, this is so this funny, is great. I need to share it with yeah, someone. Yeah. And it's very accessible, it's quite short. And if you, like, Grey and Green just generally is really great. Um, Brighton Rock is a brilliant one. This is a prime example of something that I read that I never would have found or picked up otherwise. And this was for, um, so I have it here. It was for contemporary literatures in English. We were talking about like postmodernism and all that kind of stuff. I remember the first one we read was The Crying of Lot 49. Oh yeah. Hated Thomas it. Finch. Oh, I hated it so yeah. much. I was like, if this is what the class is gonna be, I wanna be out. <laughs> then I read this and I loved it and I wrote an essay about it and talk about it all the time. It is Wide Circus SOC by Jean Rhys. And this is basically, I feel like the way to describe it that will make people read it is Jane Eyre fan fiction. Yeah, 100%. So it's a character from Jane Eyre. I don't want to reveal who it is. It's a character who doesn't really get their proper story told in Jane Eyre. And this is kind of an attempt to tell that story, tell it maybe in a different light. You can figure out that it's based on Jane Eyre. I mean, it says on the back because this is like a student copy, I think. I think you can read the book and not Oh, you can read no. it completely separate yeah. from Jane Eyre and still yeah. it's its own story. Yeah. It's so beautifully written. In... I think it's set in Jamaica, mm -hmm. it's definitely in like a hot country. I think that might have been partly why I felt like into it. Like you said earlier, the story um, that it tells is a minor character in Jane Eyre, but one that is always there. When we were looking through our selections, especially I think in your first years when you're studying English Lit, depending, I don't know what it's like now, but when we did, it's a lot of the canon or like it's a lot of like white male authors yeah and i think when you move into like later years and masters i feel like it often does get a bit better but i think there's definitely something to be said for uh the curriculum i just did not realize when i was studying that that was like a conversation and something that, that would have been good for me to think about a bit more so i think actually it's interesting when i was thinking about the books for this that i was a bit appalled at myself because the books all of the books that I chose were white men, um, post-war British authors. Mm -hmm. oh, that isn't my general kind of reading. Right, but I guess you pick your favourites from what you're given. What I was given, right? and yeah. that I was given a lot of that, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But to break from that, um, I chose one book that I absolutely adored, and most of you will either have read it or seen the series, and it's The Handmaid's Tale by mm -hmm. Margaret Atwood. So good. So we were talking about like dystopian fiction. I know that Sonna did a course on dystopian fiction. Yeah. I did as well. She's just such an incredible writer. You were completely in the book. Um, I only read this two years ago, so I didn't okay. read it during my degree. Did um, you see the series? Yes. So I've yeah. seen season one. I haven't seen season two yet. Classic story. I think you all know kind of what it's about, but a society where women don't really have a lot of rights. Um, women that are of childbearing age are given to the, these older couples because there's a massive fertility problem and men are just basically controlling yeah. the whole business. It's about um, one of the women who's a handmaid. Yeah. Telling her story of what happened to her. What happened. I was also recommended it by a few people because I like dystopian fiction. Mm -hmm. I remember talking about like Brave New World and 1984. Oh, Brave New World. You didn't get into it. No. Quite no. I, I, I might I read that again. It. But I haven't read 1984. Um, you haven't. I mean, that that's a classic. Yeah. And along alongside this, like my last one. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. I'm really annoyed because I can't find my copy, <laughs> so I've just picked another book by this author, John Wyndham. So this is so The Midwich Cuckoos, which I've read recently. But mine is The Day of the Triffids. Show it on the back. The Day of the Triffids. <laughs> I read this for my dystopian fiction course. I read a few books on there where I was like, mm, didn't love that. I read The Road, uh, did not like The Road. I think my whole course didn't like The Road. It was really yeah. funny, but we were like, is it just that Dutch people just don't get is on with it? I don't yeah. know why. David Triffids, don't know if I would have come across it if I'd just been reading dystopian stuff and apocalyptic stuff by myself, but <laughs> the story is so hard to explain. It's very hard to explain, but it is akin to uh, 28 days later. Yes, because, and 
I just got so yesterday I watched the first episode of The Walking Dead and they do the same opening. They what? do the and same also, thing. Yep, like 28 days later. I mean, and I was like, Wyndham is everywhere. I mean, it's, yeah. now it's just become maybe like a trope. But it, it's a man who wakes up in the hospital, he's had like something with his eyes, and he wakes up, and I think the first sentence is something like, when you wake up uh, on a Wednesday and it sounds like a Sunday, you know something's wrong. And basically, there's been a meteor shower, and everyone's gone blind. Yeah. And <laughs> things just gotten very much out of control. But it has these classic scenes of him like, walking through an abandoned like Westminster in London. Yeah. I think Wyndham is, for me, he is so good at doing really understated, like subtle storytelling. Something horrific is happening and you don't really realize until you turn the page that you're like, what did I just read? Yeah. Oh, so and there's good. always, I think, that underlying thing of um, like psychic. Mm -hmm. There's always some kind of weird some psychic sort of thing going of on, but yeah. it's never really fully explained. And I think that, again, in, so in Midwich Cuckoos, mm -hmm. which is the one we've got here, that is, uh, kind of more developed, um, but that kind of underlies Dave yeah. Triffids as well. And I guess the weird stuff in Dave the Triffids is Triffids are these plants that yeah. became popular <laughs> and that people have in their front yard and they've got like stingers, but they've yeah. got the stingers <laughs> off. And then when all of humanity has gone blind, these plants just start growing and growing and they're on little chains and they break free from their yeah. chains they can, like, and they start run around. wandering around. Yeah. <laughs> it's just these massive walking plants with stingers. It really um, reminds oh, me it's of so great. Um, Little Shop of Horrors for some reason. Oh, right. Okay, that's like, it's so the, the um, plant in that is kind of what I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really bizarrely. There's some amazing like old film posters where they've done film. I've watched two film adaptations. Yeah, you can't, you can't adapt this into <laughs> no, a film, I, I, it's just not possible. Gone on to read lots of Wyndham, I uh, have a bit more left to read, but it's just such a weird one that now is one of my favourite books ever. I was so happy I got to do the apocalyptic course, because I remember hearing about it the year before and I was like poised to yeah. sign up, I was like, as soon as this goes up, I'm gonna... I'm doing it. Yeah, no, also a massive fan of Wyndham, and we're both saying that we both will always recommend Windham to people. Yeah. My last book, I actually didn't study, but I ended up doing it for my dissertation. I'm not going to talk about my dissertation because it's still very stressful. But again, kind of following along the path of lesser known greats by very famous authors is Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. It's a collection of nine stories, unsurprisingly, by J.D. Salinger. <laughs> they are all slightly surreal. Um, they are very separate. They're like very much set in like the heart of America or like cities or like a, it's a futuristic you... kind of thing or? not really they're like like not futuristic there's one though that's about psychic abilities okay. and it's slightly strange that's not what eerie. I would expect from J.D. Sandy. no yeah. exactly it's very they're very different to Catching the Rye which is obviously his most famous work they're all quite emotive some of them because they're so short you're like what why does that stop there? I want to know more. The first right. book is called um, Perfect Day for Banana Fish and the ending of that is so surreal and you had no idea where it's going to go. They're very American. I quite okay. like reading so about did you do to me. American and British lit? I did mainly British literature. The American course I didn't actually enjoy. Mm -hmm. like, I I, really there's a lot of American classics away. that I don't get on with. I should try harder. In fact, I should probably go back and read more, especially because I, there were some that I loved, like Jodie Salinger. Yeah. Um, and these are just really emotive. There's one here, again, called For Esme with Love and Squalor, and it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible, and it's set during the Second World War mm -hmm. um, in Devon, I think, and you'll just cry little eyes out. The last words. Oh god, I love talking about books. Maybe it was a bit of inspiration for if you are thinking about studying English Lit, or if you just want to, you know, reminisce about your your days reading books you didn't like, and then some that you did. <laughs> I hope that maybe you'll pick some of those up. Maybe not the Riverside Chaucer, <laughs> but I'd I'd love to hear if there's any stuff that you read either like at school or at uni that you wouldn't have picked up otherwise but um but yeah. really really loved and really kind curious. of loved to this day thanks for coming onto my channel and sharing your loved books thank you for having me if there's any videos you'd ever like me to do about my degree i've done a bunch so i'll put a playlist in the description but if there's any things that i haven't covered yet let me know i'd love to make them and that's it for now thanks so much for watching Dewey, sweet Aww.